on ZC News Now, three people shot in Arlington, the latest from police overnight. And starting November with possible spotty showers, a fall feel expected to return for the weekend. And pizza apologizing for the controversial ad, working with activists to make amends. I believe in redemption. I don't believe in holding anybody down. We all make mistakes. The final push for early voting in D.C. and Virginia. Voters are making their way to the ballot box this weekend. Plus, a night of frights across the DMV. We love home. Recapping all the candy and costumes. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is D.C. News Now. All right. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on DC News Now. I'm Shanika Grimshaw in for tonight, right? Yeah, good morning to you. I'm Corey <laughs> Tang. We're going to get more on the forecast with meteorologist Jack Hillier this morning mm -hmm. for start this Friday. And I think uh, people probably will have to deal with a little bit of sprinkles in certain parts of the DMV. But overall, it's really not going to be a bad day. No, I mean, we're already starting off with temperatures in those 60s at this hour. So a warm start. But yes, a few of those light showers out there right now. Those are mainly in the northernmost parts of the region. You do see that band of light green up towards Hagerstown and now that's really moving over towards Frederick right now at this point and continue to move its way east where we do still have a few of those showers even across parts of northern Loudoun County but like I mentioned these are very light as we're starting off your Friday morning. Let's also see what this cold front as it's moving its way through but that colder air really doesn't push in until later on through the overnight hours tonight. So out there today we'll see a gradual clearing of those skies even behind that cold front and high temperatures will still be allowed to reach into those mid to upper 70s. A couple of us will likely reach 80 degrees as well. Then it's later on tonight that those temperatures will drastically drop under mainly clear skies back in those upper 30s to low to mid 40s as we wake up tomorrow morning and it's much more seasonable for this weekend. I'll go over those details in that seven day forecast coming up. All right, Jackie, thank you. Breaking overnight, two people were fighting for their lives and are another person in serious condition after a shooting that took place last night in Arlington. That's right. Let's go now to Candace Cole, who's live in Arlington near where that happened. Good morning, Candace. Good morning, Shanika and Corey. I'm here on the 4300 block of Columbia Pike. That's where Arlington PD said those people were shot just after 1045 last night. And this all happened in this area. There are a lot of apartment buildings, residences, and also shops in the area. So a pretty heavily uh, trafficked area here. Now, police say when they arrived on the scene, they saw three people uh, suffering from gunshot wounds, all of them taken to area hospitals where two are are in critical condition and one is listed in serious condition with non life threatening injuries. As of right now, police are still looking for the shooter. Anyone with any information with regard to what happened here is urged to contact Arlington police. You can do so at the number on your screen. You can also contact their tip line. That's also that email address you see up there for now reporting live in Arlington. Candace Cole DC News Now. All right, thank you, Candace. And breaking overnight in the district, police are investigating a double shooting in Southeast. This all happened on 22nd Street. Police say they found two people, a woman and a teenage boy, with gunshot wounds at the scene. They were both rushed to the hospital and were told both of them are expected to be okay. All right, developing now more than 30 people in Aspen Hill, Maryland, without a home after a Halloween fire. Investigators believe a knockoff phone charger started it took place at an apartment building on Pear Tree Court. A witness says flames started on the third floor. Firefighters say six people, including a child, were rescued. We throw ladders. We put ladders up every single day in non-emergency situations while we're training. And of course, here, it was just flawless. Ladders went up, people came down, citizens were rescued. Firefighters say two people were treated for smoke inhalation. And in Fairfax County, the assistant principal of an elementary school facing charges for not reporting a teacher who was assaulting students. Assistant principal Dana Chen now suspended without pay. That's according to the school district. The charge comes after the arrest of teacher Elizabeth Nagagata in June. She allegedly abused several four year old special education students in court documents. Witnesses say she shoved a student pulled a chair out from some of the children and stomped on a child's arm. The assistant principal allegedly knew about the abuse and didn't report it, which is required by law. The teacher is in custody facing seven assault charges. 
All right, time right now is 6.04 on this uh, Friday morning here. A former D.C. corrections officer pleaded guilty to embezzlement charges. The U.S. Attorney's Office says Andra Parker admitted to misappropriating more than $30,000 of funds from the Department of Corrections Labor Union. Parker was the chairman of the union from 2018 to 2019 and had full access to the union's bank account. They say Parker used those funds for travel and entertainment. He is scheduled to be sentenced in March. And Maryland lawmakers working to hold young people more accountable for nonviolent crimes. That's right. Starting today, new changes will be coming to the state's juvenile justice system. The changes expand the jurisdiction of the Department of Juvenile Services. It impacts kids between the ages of 10 and 12, and the change requires a petition for a child in need of supervision is filed when someone is in that age range is accused of stealing a vehicle or other crimes. Previously, kids under 13 were able to be sent home to parents. That wasn't a license for us just to lock every young child up, but it was an opportunity for us to say, look, something's going on with this child. They need to be held accountable in the juvenile system, and we need to provide services to them and require them to complete those services and programs before they can uh, uh, come back into the community. The new changes also create a panel to oversee the Department of Juvenile Services. And D.C. News Now is your local election headquarters. Maryland's Attorney General is ordering a D.C. organization to stop sending threatening letters to Maryland non-voters. The Attorney General's office has received several complaints about voting report cards being sent from the Center of Voter Information. The cards have information about the recipient's voting history in the last four elections and comparing it to their neighbor's voting history. The Attorney General's office says recipients felt intimidated by the report cards. We reached out to the organization for comment. So far, we have not heard back. In Western Maryland, the race for Congress in the 6th District may be one of the most competitive in the country. That's right, and both candidates brought some big names to help them campaign. Republican Neil Parrott is a former state lawmaker, and House Majority Leader Steve Scalise came to help him rally voters. He says Parrott knows what it takes to lower the cost of essentials like food, gas, and utilities. Meanwhile, Democrat April McLean Delaney met with supporters with the help of Congressman Jamie Raskin and Governor Wes Moore. And over in Virginia, voters have through tomorrow to cast a ballot. Campaigns now making their final push to voters ahead of Election Day Tuesday. Democrats say their message is simple. It's time to turn the page from chaos and division caused by Trump. Republicans working to remind voters their lives were better four years ago. They're taking nothing for granted. I have seen a fervor and an intensity and, a, and an enthusiasm and quite frankly, yes, a joy in the volunteers that, and activists that have shown up. Our people from one end of the state to the other, north and south, east and west, are working as hard as humanly possible. We have opened 38 campaign offices around the state, hired full-time staffs. We have 11,000 poll watchers at work. Those in Virginia, you still have some time. Early voting in Virginia ends at 5 tomorrow evening. And the district's local businesses near the White House are preparing for Election Day by boarding up their stores. You can see right here in this video, the McDonald's and the Frame Mender on 17th Street completely boarded up here. Employees tell us they are still open, though. People passing by took photos and tell us they are surprised to see stores and restaurants boarded up so soon understand that they do it, but I feel sorry that it has to be done. We're crazy, and I think that they shouldn't do this again because it's going to get even crazier. <laughs> so far, D.C. police say there have not been any credible threats. The department is still increasing officer presence across the city on Election Day. All right, a warm Halloween night giving kids a chance to show off their costumes. Yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. Check them out. Some kids in Northwest got a treat, a whole street closed to cars for their spooky celebration. DC News Now's Marielle Carbone caught up with kids having a great night. Across the district, the ghouls and goblins are out this Halloween night. With pumpkins, vampires, and even Baby Shark getting in on the fun. He's obsessed with uh, Baby Shark. 
So it was a, a very easy choice. For the Bosch family, about. it's their first time trick-or-treating together. The unseasonably warm weather, unexpected. We're kind of regretting buying full suit up uh, <laughs> costumes here. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't feel like Halloween. And this Halloween is the second warmest on DC record, with temperatures hitting 83 degrees. Happy Halloween. For Linda Real, <laughs> it's fun. It's great. Giving out candy is tradition, but she says she'd prefer it to be a bit more crisp out while she does it. I'd rather it be cooler. I kind of don't have that fall feeling. 100% candy and dressing up. For Rosa Nora Hamlin, costumes and candy are key for their favorite holiday. We love Halloween. And with no chill in the air, these kids could fully show off their costumes. No coats needed. What are you dressed as for Halloween this year? Spider-Man. What is your costume? Um, I don't know. It's like nobody. Um, people think it's just a man like on the top of me, but it's not. It's just me. My mom made it. What is this? You're missing your head up there. No. <laughs> this is my costume.